Hello everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we will learn about skinning. So, skinning is the process of taking bones or any objects that can influence a mesh in deformations and having those bones or having those objects deform your character model. So, anytime you see a video game, for instance, or you're watching a movie and you see these 3D characters jumping around or moving around, they have actually a skeleton built into them. And that skeleton is what is driving their deformations or their change of shape, okay? All right, so what we will go ahead and do now is learn the process of skinning. Again, this is gonna be just an overall overview about skinning. So how do we have these bone objects that we have in our scene to influence and deform this arm model? Well, first, what we want to do is select the arm mesh and then from the modify tab under the modifier list, we want to choose the skin modifier. Okay. To grab it faster, you can press the S key so that every modifier that begins with the S will show up. Okay, here's the skin modifier. Let's go ahead and choose that. Now that the skin modifier has been added successfully to our uh, model, the next step we want to take is to simply scroll a bit until we get to this bones section, which is found under the parameters rollout. From here, we will go in and choose this add a button. Now, something to keep in mind is that even though we have bones shown right over here, we most certainly don't need to use just bones for our skinning process. We can use any object we would like, which is a very interesting and a great thing in 3ds Max. Now, once we click on this add button, we'll get this new select bones dialog box that we can use to specify the bones we would like to add. Okay. In our case, we would want to add the forearm bone. Let's control click to add to our selection. We would want also to add the hand bone as well as the upper arm bone. Now, this wrist or this hand to bone, that's the very last bone at the end of the chain. That's this little small bone over there, okay? I don't like to add that to our bones list that will influence the mesh. That's because that will just add unnecessary work when it comes time to editing the deformations that we get initially as we add these bones to the skin. And so we will leave that last tip bone out of the list. So we will select only the forearm bone, the hand bone, as well as the upper arm bone. Then we will hit the select button. And voila, our bones have been added successfully as influence objects. So essentially, these are going to be the bones that will influence our mesh. Now, notice this. If you were to go and select, for instance, the forearm bone, okay? If you want to, you can select it from the schematic view. Here is the forearm bone. So if you are having a hard time selecting it in the viewport, all you need to do is grab the schematic view and here is the forearm bone. Now, with that selected, as we start now to rotate this using the rotate tool, you can see now the mesh is being driven by the bone. All right, this is looking fantastic. Okay, and now you may be asking yourself, how is this working? How we are getting this kind of result. Well, you can think of the skinning process sort of like parenting in some sort. And to show you exactly what I'm talking about, if I select, for instance, the 
mesh or the arm model and from the modify tab under the editable poly in the vertex sub object mode if i now select for instance these vertices right over here and start moving them around with the move tool what's actually happening when skinning is that we have parented in a way the vertices that make up our model to the influence objects that are in our case the bone object and so we have gone ahead and taken these bones okay and said all right i want you to be the parent for instance the forearm i want you to be the parent and i want these vertices for instance to be your children okay so <laughs> that's basically what we have done and how skin works and the end result is like this when we do that and we apply the skin modifier and we add influence objects we get this sort of parenting of the vertices and each vertex is parented to a specific bone objects okay in our scene all right so this is how i said the scanning process and how it works let's now stop the lesson here okay in this lesson we have learned what is scanning and how it works in the next lesson we will take this a step further and we'll discover how to edit our skin deformations